On this episode, we take care of a blower motor issue and a really nagging ABS issue. Welcome back to the Auto Obsessive Garage. Chad Mick with you again for another installment of Project Enthusiast Spec Accord. That's our 2003 Accord V6 Coupe Manual. And that's an awesome name with a lot of awesome attributes, I guess, is what we're doing. Anyway, I'm gonna start off with two annoying things that the car came to me with. One being the ABS traction control lights, the little caution triangle for you Honda Accord people out there that know what I'm talking about. Ah, uh, so annoying. I usually indicate something wrong with the ABS system. In my case, I could feel it periodically kicking on when driving normally, which is concerning. The lights are always illuminated, so that's the issue. You do have to have an advanced scan tool or bring it to a dealership, pinpoint which one it is, but at nearly 220,000 miles, I'm gonna replace all four with a quality replacement brand. Hopefully that takes care of the issue. The second horribly annoying thing that this car came with is a blower motor that doesn't shut off. So you put the key in, you even run it in the on position, always air coming out. You can't adjust the amount of air coming out. So all your controls are kind of not doing anything. The blend doors work, I can switch where it goes, but it's stuck on all the time. So I'm gonna show you guys how to troubleshoot that. The same troubleshooting applies if your blower motor doesn't come on at all. So let's go ahead and go through these two annoying things that the car came with, and then we'll get into our regular maintenance stuff. I'm sure there's plenty of that waiting for me. So let's get in the garage and get some work done. So we've got some ABS speed sensors. This is the brand I've elected to go with, NTK. So I wanna show you what these look like and this is what we're gonna be replacing all over the car because we do have that traction control ABS issue which is pretty prevalent on these vehicles as they get up in the high mileage. And you really need to have a super advanced tool, even some of the super advanced scan tools will not tell you which one to replace. So they're not expensive but I figure at 220,000 miles, it's time to replace all four at the same time and try to get that code cleared up. This car did have that issue where I was driving and the ABS would pulse every once in a while and interfere with stability control and that light would come on for the TCS, I think it is, in this car. So yeah, not cool. So what these guys look like, now they go by multiple different names. ABS sensor, speed sensor, ABS speed sensor. So uh, you can see here the orange plug. Now the issue replacing these is they are pretty accessible in the rear. It's uh, super easy to get to, but in the front, and then it has a simple plug that goes into your hub and kind of sticks out by your brakes. So I'm gonna get a flashlight and show you how hard these are to access. So down here in the wheel well, we're in the driver's front. Uh, you can see this wire right here. This is actually the ABS speed sensor. It goes in, you can see it down. Make sure you can see it back there. Even in the dark, it's kind of just plugged into the back here has a little 10 millimeter bolt holding it in. You can see it's this part of this unit, it has a little plastic section here, and then it goes up through the fender here. So let's check on the other side where that comes out. Because this is where it gets a bit tricky in this car. So we're looking down past the master cylinder there, and you're looking for an orange clip. See it down there? Yeah. There is not a lot of space to get my hand down there. So I can't reach down here, I could take the, I could take the bar off, the stabilizer bar and all that stuff, but that's a pain in the butt. You can actually reach under here and go all the way back if you have long enough arms, and that's what I'm gonna do. So, kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, same on the passenger side, same kind of deal for the front one, and we are doing all four, so can you guys see the orange? There it is. So we gotta get him too. Same deal, he's gonna be hard to reach. The rear ones are pretty easy, so maybe we'll start with those. But yep, I'm gonna replace oh, all four of those. Here you can see the wire goes into the hub. You can trace it up along this all the way to here. This is where it passed through the fender. So that's what we're gonna be removing. So 10 millimeter here, 10 millimeter here, and I think another 10 millimeter there. Let's pull all that down. And now we gotta do the reaching around inside the under the hood and see if we can get this. I actually reached under there, was able to use these, you know, those pliers to disconnect the clip. Made it a lot easier. Probably not gonna help when we install the new one, but hey, at least we got the old one out. Should be coming out of this hole right now. 
Boom, there we go. So let's go ahead and secure it all up, push it through the hole and figure out what the heck we're gonna do to connect it on the inside. It's gonna be, it's gonna be fun. I'm just kind of leaving everything finger tight and that way if I have to move anything for whatever reason. Now let's get under the hood and try to connect that clip, which is gonna be pretty challenging. That was entirely zero fun. I was able to manipulate my arm through there to click it all back together. So now we wanna press this piece in so it holds it. Cool, and now we wanna tighten up the rest of these. We got the driver's side done, time to do three more. Rear ones, but you can see the clip is right here, which was super hard to get to under the hood. So wire goes down, same thing. Super easy to do the rear ABS sensors. Gonna go ahead and swap all these out now. After replacing the ABS speed sensors, you're still gonna have your traction control and triangle light illuminated. What you need to do is find a source online how to reset that. And for the 2003 Honda Accord, I had to reset the ABS, which is a procedure, and then I had to reset the TCS, which is a separate procedure. But there's tons of sources out there, guys. I didn't wanna have redundant you know, content where a million people have gone over it before. So after you do the replacement, you will need to do that to reset the lights. Some advanced scan tools can also reset the lights. So just to let you know that little bit of info. There is something annoying I wanna show you with the Honda Accord. So we'll put the key to the on position. And you're gonna hear airflow. And the HVAC is completely off. How fun is that? Uh, when you do have any kind of HVAC going on up here, it'll show it in that like secondary screen. You'll see low, high, AC, all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, let me show you what that looks like actually. So if I hit auto, the only thing I can't do is stop air from coming through here. So you can turn AC off, all this kind of stuff. We can increase the fan power and everything, but it's not really changing, is it? I can change where it goes. So the blend doors are working. That's a physical thing, but I can't change the speed. The real problem here is the fan won't shut off. So I'm gonna show you how to do that, or at least try. So there's a few fuses we're gonna look at, and then there's a blower motor and the transistor we're gonna check out next. I've already checked the fuses and relays, but I'll show you where they're located. There is a seven and a half amp fuse. That's right here. Uh, if you don't know where you're under the dash, Fuses are on the Honda Accord, the 2003. There's your hood latch. Right up here is a little box you can pull out. And our lighting is probably absolutely atrocious in here. Let me grab a light. So you can see our fuses there. It's actually gonna be fuse number 30. And it's a seven and a half amp fuse. If you don't have a fuse tester, uh, those are pretty cheap and easy to come by. Or you can look and just see if the element inside is actually broken. Mine was good and I swapped it with a known good one. Uh, just to make sure. That's Fuse and Relay 101, guys. If you think you have a bad Fuse or Relay, just swap it with a known good one of equal amperage. Uh, and it's probably the best test you can ever do with that kind of stuff. So we're good under the dash. Next, we're gonna check under the hood. You're under the hood. Fuse box is this fella right here. Here to do one-handed, but you got your fuses right here. We're looking from the front of the car, so this is how it should be oriented. This 40 amp fuse back here is the guy. So you're gonna swap that with another good one to test that. When you do pull that fuse, your blower motor shouldn't work at all. I'm pretty sure that's gonna happen for most of you. Now, if your blower motor isn't working at all, then that's probably where you're gonna start. You also have a relay right here. So you can swap that with this one actually to test. Again, swapped it continued blowing nonstop. So that's where we're at with this. So no luck there. That's always nice when it's an easy relay or something. So the next thing we're gonna test is the transistor or resistor, which is next to the actual blower motor. And I'll show you how to get to that. 
The blower motor on the 2003 Accord is located underneath the glove box. So get a flashlight and get a Phillips head screwdriver before you crawl under here. I advise pushing the passenger seat as far back as it can to open up as much room as possible, unless you're a contortionist. I am not. So we'll get our flashlight under there. Now removing this kick panel, and it's simply this panel right under here, is actually very straightforward. It will offer you a little bit of resistance, but you really just yank it down. There's a couple clips, you push it down and towards you and you can just bust it off like that. Won't hurt anything. Now, what we're looking at under here, it's a little tricky to navigate. That's your blower motor. I've got pretty much center of the screen. And then you're gonna angle this way and zoom in. That is your resistor or transistor. I don't know, it's called both things. Depends where you read it. But that's gonna be it right there. You can see the two Phillips screws and the plug going into it. That's what we're gonna test next. And I'm actually gonna walk you through testing that. So it's as easy as taking two Phillips screws, pulling those out, unclip it first and just pull the unit out. And there's the unit. Oh, it's a little tricky to do with just uh, operating a camera at the same time, but you can see these four pins. We're gonna be testing the top two or the ones closest to this notch, since this is a coupe, and for some reason the sedans are different. The bottom two are what you're gonna test. But testing these two pins, we're testing for resistance, so go ahead and set your multimeter to ohms, which is the measure of resistance. You should have, when you go to test this, you should have between 1.4 and 1.5 measures of resistance. So let's go ahead and check out what we're actually dealing with this unit. And I've got 1.486 on the old multimeter. So that indicates the unit is working correctly, but it's not the only way to test it. I think there's issues where it tests fine and still doesn't work. So what I'm gonna do, it's a pretty cheap part. I do have one that I can do a free return on. I'm gonna go ahead and install that part at this time and see if that takes care of the issue. Here's the new unit on the right here. Uh, we're gonna install the vehicle, see how it goes. It's a real quick installation. We'll slap it in and see what happens. All right, new resistor in place, moment of truth. Switching the key to the on position. What? Wow, look at that. No airflow. Go figure. And it is hard to track this information down. A lot of folks online say to replace that if the fan isn't working at all. But ours was stuck on, which was definitely a little different. Let's go to AC and see if our AC works now. So we can, okay, cool. So now we're just controlling with this. Let's look. Oh. How about that, guys? Looking at AC on, you can see we've got recirc, we've got dual climate, air conditioning is on. Let's switch it to great at us. Oh, this is awesome. Heck yeah. And the off button, which wouldn't do anything before. There we go, guys. If you are having issues with your blower motor doing things and not reacting to the control panel. Obviously check the fuses, check the relays, but replacing that resistor is what did it for us. Awesome, huge fix, big success here in the garage. I love that stuff. Now to finish the job, all we need to do is put this kick panel back up. Now if you look, there are these little rubber nubs down here, they kind of go into some holes. You can see once you start looking under there, see in the back, nice and easy. And then the clips will just, you'll just push up and these clips will lock in. So super easy. Let's try it one-handed while filming. I think that'll be the ultimate proof that it's not that hard to do. Yep, that works. Awesome. What a sweet job to get done and fix a major issue.